ISO is another way that you can control the overall exposure of your image. Uh, and like f-stop, or aperture, and like shutter speed, it's just a series of numbers. Um, traditionally, ISO, or as it used to be called by some camera manufacturers, ASA, uh, is a standard that relates to the quality of the image. So back in the day, and still to this day, you'll get stuff like this. This is uh, a roll of Kodak Portra 800. This is ISO 800. So in theory, the grain quality in this film at 800 is going to be for all intents and purposes the same as the quality on this camera when I'm shooting at ISO 800. So what exactly does changing your ISO do? Most cameras will start at ISO 100 and jump up to 200, 400, 800, 1600, 3200, and some cameras will even go as high as 6400, uh, and you'll find a couple that will go even higher than that. Basically, ISO controls the overall quality, like I said, of your image. ISO 100 is more reserved for bright daylight, maybe outdoors, whereas something like ISO 6400 or 3200 is more reserved for indoor locations shooting in low light. For example, if I were shooting a concert, uh, I would probably shoot it around 326400. At ISO 6400, you need a lot less light to expose the sensor. However, you trade off quality of the image. So you're gonna have a lot grainier of a photo than say if you were shooting at ISO 100, it would be much, much crisper. Most people, when they're setting their camera's exposure, they'll set their f-stop and their shutter speed first, and then they'll address uh, their ISO accordingly to make sure that they're getting a fast enough shutter speed and the appropriate f-stop. As cameras get better and better, this number here gets less and less grainy. And it's actually, we've gotten to the point where digital cameras uh, can shoot in much better low light situations than traditional film cameras. And even more than that, digital cameras can now basically see better than the human eye in low light conditions. Now this isn't the world's most interesting photo. It was shot for a test I was doing on the Nikon J1 camera. But here we go, this is ISO uh, 6400. And you can see, if you zoom in, that it has a lot of grain, uh, a lot of loss of quality. And then this is also ISO 3200. These are the two highest ISOs on the Nikon J1 camera. And then these are the two lowest. This is uh, ISO 200 and ISO 100. Uh, again, I had to change the aperture uh, and the shutter speed to get these to all be the same exposure. But again, you can tell that it, things look a lot smoother here than they do here. And that's just an important thing to keep in mind with ISO that when you do crank it up in low light, you are going to see some quality loss. So that's the basics of ISO and how it relates to your camera and your overall quality of your image.